morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you're at, ladies and gents. I am Kura Isagami, your resident tinker and metarotter, and this is the Metarot News Network, bringing you all the latest developments and happenings with our favorite pet fighting robot series. Well, with the Cyber Kitty Kuro-chan collab rerun behind us, it looks like as if things might have started to calm down and slow down just a little bit in light of basically two collabs really close together. But, while that may somewhat be the case, we still do have a pretty fair chunk of new models or some new updates coming in that'll keep things particularly exciting. The first of which is a third Archangel type model in particular to celebrate and bring forth White Day, so that a triple Archangel team, or in some cases a triple Heavenly team with very solid coverage, is now 100% possible. That being said, let's go ahead and jump right into what was announced for this week, starting of course with the gacha banners on the White Day Archangels. First of which is the brand new model being introduced into the game, MCL0 Milgnis, the, Mike, the Archangel Michael type, with a kit of Flame, Fujigiri, Blow Away, Float Legs, and the leg ability of Trap Buster. Now, as a brand new model, it may not be bringing anything new to the table, but it is certainly yet another model to help populate a rather rare skill that has been seeing a lot, and I mean a lot, of viability in current meta, and that is, of course, Sujigiri, the legendary stab in the back for anyone that chooses to turn their back or, their, or show enemy weakness. Behind him, of course, to celebrate the introduction of this Archangel type, is, of course, the rerun of the other two that we had up to this point of which the other Metarot S introdu introductee, GBL0 Gabriven, the Gabriel Archangel type, with a kit of Rebirth, Long Shot, White Break, White Head Legs, and the Leg Ability of Rising. And then, last but not least, what's any Archangel team without the original OG of the Motif series introduced in Metarot, AAG0 Particle, the original Archangel type, with a kit of Mirror Guard, Stat Cleanse, Revive, biped legs and the leg ability of auto of auto repair now article is also capable of meta change with a form change down to tank type and her kit changing out for counter guard super repair time attack and the leg ability of holy grace now of these three models i have to say all three of them can be see can have very good viability no matter how you choose to use them or in what teams you choose to use but honestly, I still do have to give the big MVP of these three alone to Particle, just for the sake that as a pure set alone, she ticks off a lot, and I mean a lot, of boxes that can make even the most troubling super invasions a piece of cake and very easily cheesable, with her incredible healing pool and very high armor pool to keep herself healthy. Now that's not to say that Milknis or Gabrivet are not are bad or not worth using. Absolutely not. They are both very solid models in what they both cover. But in terms of priority, I would have to give that to Particle as the leading bot to go after. Now, as if this wasn't enough, we actually have two other models that are joining us. One of which is a new model, another of which is a rerun. And that is, of course, the other samurai type from Metarot 8, SAM01M Protomusha the counterpart to, to samurai female type Tomoe, with the kits of Reckless, Double Beam Sword, Head Legs, and the Leg Ability of Shuda. And, since this one also is a newcomer to Metarot 8 with moderately decent coverage in the story, of course with that is another model that had a really high importance in Metarot 8, that is FDR Zero Greed, the Bone Dragon type, with the kit of Laser, Double Sword, biped legs, and the leg ability of Carnage. Now, even incorporating these two models, I do have to say the gacha priority should stay moderately the same, with Particle being the really big go-to model to, to shoot for, just for the sake of overall coverage and what she brings to the field for off or non-combative support. Behind her, I would have to give Milkness the next big go-to model for the very solid skills that he possesses, and of course, float legs you can generally never ever go wrong with using. Behind him, I'd have to put Greed as a nice third for his very solid all-round coverage, especially given that he also is capable of tuning up. Behind him, Gabriven, the Gabriel Archangel type, and last but not least, Proto Musha. Now that's not to say the last three models or two models are not bad, but the other three just offer a whole lot more viability and versatility, especially when it comes to being able to keep up with current competitive meta. 
with the fierce battles we have this week, and we're kind of maintaining a trend that we started last week at the start of March with uh, lesser seen uh, fierce battle bots to be collected and made use of. This week, we're seeing a rerun of SAM0 Samurai, the original Samurai type from Metaral 1, with a kit of full charge, double beam sword, five head legs, and the leg ability of endurance. Behind him, we have another Metarot 1 returnee, TOT0 Yellow Turtle, with the kit of heater, double laser, tank legs, and the leg ability of bullet rain. And then, last but not least, a model not from Metarot 1, but a prototype all the same, WEA03 P2 Shisaku 2, with the kit of charge buster, press, power rifle, tank legs, and the leg ability of trap buster. Now, like I mentioned, all three of these models we actually have not seen in Fierce Battles for quite some time. So it is very good to see these models get cycled again. And with that being said, I would have to give the big MVP of the week to Samurai for a multitude of reasons. But primarily for the fact that you really can't ever say no to a free full charge skill, even if it is considered a heavy part and moderately expensive to raise. That will certainly pay itself off over time if you can make the most of it. And of course, it is a very well-rounded model together as well with very good synergy with its parts. Yellow Turtle and Shisaku 2 are also both very solid as well for what they cover and what they offer. And if you are just starting out the game, basically a free power rifle that's farmable right from square one is something you generally can't ever go wrong with either because it's so readily usable right out of the box. Now with the addition and the, and the celebration of White Day, we are getting two new SR Meta Rodders to highlight the event as well. Uh, me also, uh, Meta Rodders that came from Meta Rod 8, Laurel, and Sage. Both of which we're getting not just super rare versions of them, but we are also getting rare rank versions of them to be permanently added to the Meta Rodder pool. Highlighting specifically, the super rare version of Sage will offer you a 10% damage reduction when activated, and an additional 10% if you are using Laser. The rare version of Sage will simply give you a cooldown boost when anytime you are using Sword by up to 300 bonus points. Laurel, on the other hand, as a super rare meta rotter, will offer you a, a boost to your success relative to 70% of your current charge. And if you are using Beam, you will get an additional 60% on top of that. The rare version of Laurel will instead grant, grant a heat bonus to Beam attacks of about 300 as well. So again, even though the super rare meta rotters may or may not be seen after this event closes, the permanent versions of them will be added to the banner going forward. Now, in topic of, light, of White Day as well, we are also getting the Marathon Survival event to come back around again for another run. So this is always a very good opportunity to pick up on any extra resources that you're missing or are in need of, especially when it comes to power-up chips and rubies. Now, for those that are unaware or don't quite know what, what Marathon Survival is, the rules are very simple. When going into a round, upon victory, the 12 parts you use to cross your 3 bots will be added to a banned list, which means you are not allowed to pick those parts again. And in the next round, you must pick an entirely new set of parts and win with those. And upon victory, those parts also will be added to your banned list. And your banned list will essentially keep growing until you can successfully reach a checkpoint at the end of the stage of which the banned list is refreshed and all parts are now unlocked, ready to be used again. So this is primarily a test of endurance, as well as a check to make sure that you've been raising parts other than what you main. So it generally never hurts to raise stuff up to 3 star, even if just for the sake of having it ready. So just making sure that you can keep stuff raised, and you're also no learning to be flexible with things that you may not use on a regular basis, but instead may hold on to as just filler parts for lack of a better term. In addition to Marathon Survival, we are also getting a White Day Super Invasion to commemorate the event as well, highlighting particular bots here, and of course also highlighting some new art for Greed, the Bone Dragon type. Now a lot of folks have actually seen this kind of teased in previous weeks when Greed was mentioned, or even just in-game files, but going forward with this week, he will be officially toting his new art going forward, which honestly is very nice too, might I add, adding a more dynamic pose to something that really did need a nice glow up from his original re-debut in Metarot 7. One other reminder on the, on, on the community front is the Project Rising Beatles Ori Meta Contest that is still ongoing. Even though the date has been extended to 310, Three days remain from day of recording before the event officially closes. 
So this is your final head, your final head, uh, call and heads up, Meta Rodders, for those that want to submit or participate. For this, there are no real rules or limits mentioned in what is added for the motif prompts or anything, so go nuts. One other personal request I'd like to add is that because my birthday is coming up this very next week as of today, I will be compiling and collecting all entries submitted up to 310, which is the deadline, and next week may be a particularly longer episode as I take time to kind of go through each, each entry and kind of talk about the high points and what I think of them. Sometime after that, no real idea on when we will officially announce a winner, which will be posted here on the MNN. Again, just as a personal request, make this hard for me. Make a bunch of, and I want to see a bunch of entries in this competition to make next week's episode extra long to go through them all. So that is my request and my challenge to you, and as well as a final reminder that 72 hours remain before the event closes. Also on the community front, we are still always looking for translators to assist us with any meta with any translation projects. That can include Metarot Reloaded manga, which has officially reached its the end and all chapters have been uh, officially compiled and collected. Or Metarot 3, which is still making leaps and bounds in its progress with translation of remaining text. Or even Metarot 4, who's been making some very slow progress in decompiling to begin the work on translation. So if you do know anyone that is knowledgeable in coding or cleaning or Japanese and have some time on their hands, or even if you'd like to take a crack at it yourself, you're more than welcome to reach out to me, or you can reach us in our Discord in the link provided below, and we can get you in touch with the right people to fill you in on what has been done and what still needs done up to this point. Now with the art highlights here on the MNN, I found a couple of really nice pieces just in the last couple days or so. This piece in particular here by my buddy Mono Zero on Twitter highlighting Nin Ninja, the iconic and well-loved ninja type from the days of Metarot 1. And the reason for the highlight of this particular ninja type is because of the new episode of Metarot that was aired on the official YouTube channel, highlighting Nin Ninja as the essentially Metarot flavor of the week in what was highlighted and shown. And this piece here by this Twitter user here, that was relatively new to the page, so probably made their page relatively recently, highlighting a very iconic piece of, of the well-loved Ronin type Rokusho with his iconic bird pal from the anime. Beautiful work done on both of these pieces, and I especially love the shading and the blending that they use there for that piece on Rokusho. So definitely give both of these users a follow if you'd like to see more Metara art in your feed, and share around their amazing work that they bring to the community. But, with all that being said, I do believe that covers everything for this week's episode. Like I said, it did feel like there was a lot of stuff that was dumped on us, but in the highlight of things, it wasn't actually a lot as you thought. Just mostly a bunch of gotcha banners and a couple of events for White Day and celebrating, uh, and celebrating it incoming. But, with that being said, if you'd like to know more, you can follow us below on Facebook at the Metarot News Network page, or the Metabots Forever community on there. You can also join us on Discord in the link provided and in the comments below to keep an even closer ear to the ground on the action related to Metarot. That can include any new merchandise, translation updates, my weekly episodes, fan art, you name it, that Discord's the first place you'll see it before it goes anywhere else. You can also reach out to me personally on Twitter at Itsagamikura, so if you have any questions or feedback or comments, or would just like to stop by and say hello, I leave my DMs open purposely for this very reason. And if you are a streamer or VTuber and would like to collab or even guest host with me here on the MNN, or would love to have me on your channel stop in for a visit, I would absolutely love to coordinate with you. So again, feel free to stop on in, say hello, and drop in my DMs, and I'll get back to you when I can. Do also give these wonderful friends of mine as well a follow in the Metarock community, that Twitter user Silvalion041, who does fantastic Metarot art and concepts, and has also been contracted a fair number of times in recent to design a lot of the newer models we've seen introduced in Metarot S. And do also give my buddy Lux here a follow as well on Twitter at Metarot or Lux, who likes to kind of give an ear to the ground and an outside uh, outside viewer looking in at, uh, feedback on stuff that's developed with Metarot, primarily with Metarot S and the current shakeup or tides of the meta, or even just their general thoughts on things as they go forward with the series. Both of these folks are definitely worth a follow, and you'll definitely love having them in your feeds. But with all that being said, I do appreciate you all for stopping by just as you always have, and until next time, this is your host, Kura Isagami of the Metarot News Network, signing out.